Which are better, straddles or strangles? Ask five option traders and expect to get a few different answers there. Some traders will say that strangles are safer. Others say that straddles are a smarter trade. But what if the entire debate is just simply missing the point? In this video, I'll break down the real trade-offs for you and show you how two structures that look oh so different can actually produce very similar results in the long run. You're going to walk away knowing exactly when to use each one and how to stop picking simply based on a gut feel and actually start picking based on edge. Quick heads up, if you like deep dives like this video, make sure to hit the subscribe button. I release videos like this multiple times each week, and if you subscribe, then you're going to get notified when I do. All right, so to start off, let's just make sure that we are on the same page. A straddle means that you are selling a call and a put at the same strike on the same expiration, usually at the money. A strangle means that you're selling an out-of-the-money call and put, but at the same delta. So it's still a directionless trade, but instead of doing at-the-money strikes, it's a lot wider. With a straddle, you collect more premium, but your break-evens are tighter. And with a strangle, yeah, you get less premium, but your break-evens tend to be much wider. Meaning that there's a lot more price movement that's allowed for the underlying stock before you start to lose money. And here is where most people get it wrong. Strangles tend to feel safer, and that's what attracts a lot of people to trading them. But that's only because more of your trades win. What most people don't realize, though, is that those winners are smaller. And the losses, when they do come, tend to be significantly bigger. As in something that could have been like a 3x loser turns into a 30x loser. Saying that strangles feel safer is kind of like saying, I win 80% of the time. All right, that's cool, but are you getting compensated for the risk of the 20% of the time? Is it a better compensation than you would have received doing something else? These are the questions that become important when we're trying to evaluate structures against each other. Because as you'll see, a lot of the times, it actually comes out to a similar long-term return. Let's do some math as a quick example. Let's say we're looking at two games, one called Straddle, one called Strangle. In game called Straddle, we bet $10 with a 1 to 1 risk reward, and we win about 60% of the time. In this case, the average return on each bet or game that we play would be $2. Now let's say there's a game called Strangle, and in this game we have a much higher win ratio, but also not as great of a risk reward ratio. So in this game, let's say we bet $10, we have a 80% win rate, and our risk reward in this one is 0.5 to 1. In this game, which has all sorts of different inputs, we actually see the expected value comes out to $2 once again. Whichever game you play, you actually have the same expected value. And in a lot of cases, whether you trade straddles or strangles, in the very long run, your returns are probably going to be similar. So the question isn't which is better, it's what trade-offs are you trying to make? So here's where straddles really shine, for example. The premium you collect in a straddle directly reflects the market's implied move. So when you sell a straddle, what you're basically saying is, I think realized volatility will come in lower than the market expects, and I'm willing to bet on it. And then the trade you place actually directly will be a win or loss based on whether or not it's true. That's pretty powerful because it gives you clean feedback on your idea. If your trade loses, then it's because the market moved more than the expected range. If you win, it's because it moved less. Like, that's it. It's pure. No distractions. And that's exactly why new traders should trade straddles over strangles. When you're still discovering new ideas to be trading, testing out strategies, you want to be getting the best feedback you possibly can. It's the only way to know if there's actually substance to your ideas or if you're maybe carrying a tail risk that you just weren't aware of. By the way, if you need me to clarify this in any way, leave a comment. If you go look at any of my other videos, I actually reply to everyone personally, so I'm more than happy to help you if you have follow-up questions. So that's why straddles really shine. It's the feedback you receive on your strategy and on your trade. But that doesn't mean strangles should never be used. So let's talk about when they make more sense. There's really two times that I personally like to trade strangles over straddles. The first one is when I'm really concerned about costs. When you go out of the money, your break-evens really widen, and one of the benefits of this is that it allows for more movement of the underlying stock without needing to delta hedge it or anything like that. Which means you're having to transact less and actually trade less in order to realize your expected value. A lot of times you won't even have to pay to close the trade because it's staying within your break-evens. Whereas with the straddle, any movement and something's in the money and you have to close it out which costs money to do. So once I've validated my edge, I know that it exists. I'll typically prefer to trade strangles over straddles simply from a cost basis. Now, another time that I like to trade strangles over straddles is when there's a fair amount of liquidity and I'm trading something binary like 
an earnings event where it's just the implied versus realized move. It either moves more or less than what I sold. The reason I like to do this is because a strangle allows me to structure my trade in a way where I can sell just wider than what was implied. And it just gives me this little bit of extra room on a binary outcome. And I've found that it allows me to generate a significantly higher return uh, than just selling the straddle. That's basically the general rules for when I choose straddles, when I choose strangles. And just to sum it up, let's go over a quick rule of thumb for each of them. If you're trying to test a new strategy or improve your read of implied versus realized volatility, then the straddle makes more sense. But if you've already got all of that on lock and you're trying to optimize for costs or trading these binary outcomes, then the strangle makes more sense. That's why I predict the alpha, like a lot of the times we kind of count on people having gone through content like this before, or have at least gone through our strategy masterclass, which breaks down everything you need to know for the strategies we run. And so a lot of the times we're actually trading strangles over straddles because we assume that, hey, we know the edge is there. We've already validated, done all the research, seen the back tests, and now we're just trying to monetize it and control our costs. Because at the end of the day, the straddle and the strangle, they give you the same fundamental exposure. You're betting that implied volatility will overestimate realized volatility. Everything else, the strike selection, expiration, all this, that's just the packaging. Still important, but fundamentally, it's that view we're expressing that really matters. So there you have it. The battle of the greats has finally been resolved. Straddles and strangles. The winner is neither of them. It's actually a tie. I know it's a little anticlimactic, but it is the truth. It is the reality. You now know when each one should be used. And if you found this video helpful, make sure to hit the subscribe button. You owe me that for this video. That's the least you can do to help me with the algorithm. And if you're a serious option seller, click the link in the description, take a free trial, and I'll see you inside our community. All right, everyone, take care and happy trading.